Hey guys, it's Cryptograns here. Welcome back to another Unity Idle Game tutorial video. This is episode 4.2 and today we're going to be working on the import and export system for our game. And if you end up enjoying this video, make sure you please leave a like button as it helps out the videos. Subscribe to my channel if you're new and turn on the bell for future notifications for videos and live streams. Let's hop right into it. So in the previous episode, we worked on uh, preparing a setting screen so we can throw everything in here. So I'm going to actually prepare the UI first and then we can get on with the code. So let me finish that and I'll get back to you guys. All right, so I have made the little interface real quick. So let me explain what I've done. So I have created two empty game objects that surrounds everything um, for the import and the export. So for the import, well actually for both, we have a uh, text match pro input field. So I prefer using these because they can hold way more characters than a normal one does and sometimes your saves may get really long so yes use the text much pro input field so that's this big box here we then have an import button um there's this will be an export button let me fix that real quick export and then we're going to have a paste so it's going to paste whatever you have copied and then you have a clear text just in case you want to clear this box so for the export we have the export button, so it's going to export your save into this input field. You can copy to clipboard, or you can clear the text. So we have six things, well technically five things we need to get working. So we have the import, export, paste to clipboard, copy to clipboard, and we also have the clear text. All right, so let's get started with the coding. So first we're going to open up our save system script. All right, so let's start with our user interface. So we're going to throw in all of our objects into our save system class. So first, we're going to have, so these are actually not going to be static because we're going to be referencing them inside of the inspector. So we can't do that if they're static, so just be aware of that. So first we're going to add our uh, input field, so it's going to be a TMP underscore input field. And make sure you have the using TM Pro at the top. Okay, so I have that for my import and my export. I have also added a copy and paste button as an image. So when we press copy or paste, it will turn green temporarily and we'll also have the text because it's going to show that it's uh, uh, copied or pasted the text just so the user knows. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. All right, so for the first part of this, we're going to be making our import system. So this starts with one method, import. This will be a void method and this will be public because we're going to be accessing it um, with a button in Unity. So make sure it's non-static and it's a public void. So in this import method, we're pretty much going to be writing to our original file and we're going to be overwriting it. So we're going to be doing that and then we're going to actually be reloading that file like we do in the load data method. So let's start with the writing process. So we're pretty much going to be doing the same thing as up here in the save data method. So let's create this using statement real quick. Okay, so I'm at a halt right now. We don't have a file name. So let me show you guys something real quick. So let me get it. This is idle researches. So basically I have split my import system into 10 different files. So what I do is that I have a save system string array. I access it and then I um, basically loop through all of these, all the save files. I, I save it into all and then I load them all. So if that makes sense. So basically I am rewriting all the files and then I'm reloading all of them individually. So I'm going to be, doing this very basic because we only have one save file. So let's just keep it that way. <laughs> so what we're going to do is add our original file name, which is in controller. It is player data underscore tutorial. We're going to be pasting that in here and then adding our file type. Now what we can do in here is to create a, a constant string. So I'm going to do that. So we're going to have a private constant string and this will be our file path and we're going to set it to our player data underscore tutorial. So then we can replace this with our new constant. Okay, and we can also convert this into string interpolation, which is basically just doing dollar sign, parentheses, curly braces, and then put our variable in for each of them. So it looks just like that. So now we're basically writing straight to the file. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty easy. We do the same thing up here, writer dot write line. So we're going to do writer dot write line, and then put in our import field dot text. And just to be safe, we're going to close our writer. And we should probably do the same thing up here as well, just, just to be safe. Sweet, so our import is now done. 
Now, once we import, we need to kind of reload everything. So once we load our data, we're going to have to load. Um, so yeah, we're going to load our data and then we're going to have to run our start upgrade managers again, just in case. So what we can do is access our controller. So we're going to do controller dot instance dot start. OK, so the problem here is that our start is not public. It is private. So I'm going to make this method public and then I'm going to go back to our save system class. And then now you're able to call the start method. So it's basically just going to reload everything from scratch. And one last thing we need to do is to create our directory. So every time we access a directory, we want to make sure it actually exists. So we want to do the same thing, directory.create directory, save path and backup path, just to be safe. And honestly, we really only need to do our normal save path because we're not doing anything with our backup path. So again, make sure you have directory.create directory and then put your save path in there. All right, on to part two, which is the export system. So for our export system, it's going to be a public void method. It is not static. We're going to be reading directly from the file and then throwing it into our export field. So we're going to be creating a directory again, as I forgot earlier, <laughs> and make sure you pass in your safe path as an argument. OK, so next we're going to be using uh, we're going to be creating another using statement. So we're going to be doing the same thing as our load, which is going to be our um, stream reader. So let's do that. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to access our export field and we're going to change the text. We can do dot set text. And now what we're going to do is we're going to set our export field. We're going to set it to reader dot read file to end. So this is going to read the entire file and it's going to copy as a string and then set it to our export field. And we're going to do reader dot close just to be safe. And one last thing is just in case we want to save our game right before we export it because we want the most recent version of our save. So let's head to our controller class and we don't have a save method. So I'm going to create one real quick and I'm going to move this save system, save data into our save method. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to call our save method inside of this, this, uh, this timer right here. And then what we can do is go back to our save system class and call it inside of our export. There we go. So now it's going to save and then we can export it. And that's it. On to part three, which is the copy button. So this is going to require two things. The first one is a, um, a public void method, which we're going to call copy. And then we're also going to have a public I enumerator. And this we can basically, we're going to put a timer in here so we can um, determine when we want to put our, our buttons back to normal. So this will be for our copy and our paste button. So we will have a total of three methods after we do the copy and paste system. And what we can do with I enumerators is that we can create a coroutine inside of our copy method. So then we can uh, create delays and stuff in here. Now, I am not a professional at I enumerator. So if you want to do some more additional research, you can check out the Unity forms and the Microsoft Docs. So for our copy, we're going to access an object called the GUI utility. And then there's a variable in here called system copy buffer. So this is basically your clipboard. So we're going to set that to our export field because when we export we want to copy that so we set it to that and there we go we have copied our text it's the same thing as doing control or command c so after that we want to change our copy button we want to set that color to uh, green and eventually we're going to want to make that button back to normal so we're going to grab our copy button and we're going to change the color to a new color, whatever color you want it to be. So in my case, it's this number. It's what makes this dark gray that I have in Unity, but it's this dark gray. So this is going to turn green and then it's going to go back to dark gray. So in here, I'm just going to um, add this color. So we know it's going to change it back to normal. And then we want to do the same thing for our copy text. So our copy text is going to say copied and then we're going to return it back to copy to clipboard. Okay. So just like that. Now, when we copy this, we are going to change this stuff and then return it back to normal. So in order to call this, we need to do something differently. We can't just do copy paste buttons normal. We have to do something called a start coroutine. We're creating a coroutine to call this. So this is our routine here. And it's basically going to start doing this stuff until it's finished. So it's finished after we do all this. However, we're not done yet. So we need to do a yield return new wait for seconds. And then we're going to put in a timer. So let's say I want it to go back after two seconds, for an example. So you put in a float here. So it's basically going to stop for two seconds. 
and then it's going to come back to this. So there's a lot of new terms here, yield, I enumerator, I get it, it could be confusing. It's definitely a really weird uh, concept to get around. So another thing I want you guys to know is that this is specifically a Unity thing. You can't do this in just plain C Sharp. So this is uh, a Unity built-in thing. If you want to do more research, Google is your friend. But yeah, so basically we're going to be waiting for two seconds and then we're going to be doing this stuff. And for our copy, we want to make sure we actually have stuff to copy. So if this text is empty, we're just going to ignore it because we're not really copying anything and I don't want to copy something empty, and then my clipboard is just gone. So we're just going to return it if it's empty. So for our paste, this is part four, it's going to be almost the same thing, except we're doing it in reverse. So we pretty much just copy all this and just change some of this stuff around. So um, our copy button and our uh, text will become our paste, and this copy will be pasted instead. And then we're still going to call this uh, coroutine, and then instead of setting our system copy buffer, we're actually going to be setting our import field as our system copy buffer. So we can get rid of this and it should be good. And then for our copy paste buttons normal, we're going to be doing the same thing for our paste button and our text. All right, so we're all good to go. Let's put it all together. All right, so inside of our game, we need to add our save system to the script. So let's create an empty object save system, and then drag our save system script into here. So now we have all this to assign. Let's start with our import field. So we have import, then we have export, and then our copy button, copy. Oh, so for me, it's actually selected. So this is actually my image here. So I am just going to drag those instead. So we have our copy button, which is the selected, paste, and then my copy button text. So we have our copy button text, and then our paste button text. Oops, I accidentally dragged the wrong one. So now let's assign the methods. So I'm going to be selecting all of these, the export, copy, paste, clear, all that stuff. And I'm going to be dragging the save system into the on click component right here. And then I'm going to be assigning each individual method. So we have our clear, which will be, oh, we actually haven't made that yet. So let's do that real quick. So our clear is very simple. It's just a public void clear. I'm going to put in a string uh, parameter in here just to determine what type it is. So if the type is equal to export, it's going to clear the export and then just return it. So we're going to have our export field and we're just going to leave it blank and then return. Otherwise, we're just going to clear the import field. Just like that. Very easy. So for the clear button, um, I'm going to assign the save system clear and then we have uh, export and import so our export will just say export and then our import version will just say import so for our copy button we're going to be assigning the copy method paste that will have the paste method our export will have the export method and import last but not least will be the import and that is all we have to do here guys so let's give this a shot all right, so we have some progress already. Let's head to our settings, and here we go. So let's do export. All right, so you can either click this, and it'll highlight all of it. You can copy it, and if you go to Notepad, and my computer's being very slow, I'm sorry. And if you paste it, there you go. There it all is. So we can also do the same thing, copy to clipboard, and it should go away. Cool. Oh, that's this paste clipboard. I accidentally mixed up the wrong text there. But you can see it's the exact same thing, except there's a little bit change because I exported uh, later, but to fix that, uh, we have our paste button text. I see. All right, so we know the mistake there. Now let's do import. So if we get some progress here after it's done importing my scripts, let's see, we have 54 flasks. So this one should have roughly around 40-ish. So let's copy this and we can paste it in here or we can click this paste clipboard button and you can see it says pasted and then it's good. Oh, the text is broken as well, I guess. Um, but you see we have 68. If we import, uh, we have an index out of range. Mm. But it looks like it imported for the most part. Let's see what the issue is. All right, so what I'm going to do instead, instead of calling the start method, because that's where the errors are coming from, I'm just going to go to controller.instance, and, well, we're pretty much just going to load this ourselves. So 
we can just copy this from our start method inside a controller and paste it in here. So our it will be our file path. Also, I just realized that I call this file path instead of file name. My mistake. It's all right. Um, we're pretty much just going to load the data inside here and just go with it. So I'm not really sure what's causing the errors. That's probably something else I'm going to have to check in the future, but this should work just fine. All right, let's give it another shot. So we have our save. If we import, nope, oh, doesn't do anything. Oh, I have the wrong path. So let's copy this. Copy, clear it. And then, so you see we have 77. Paste, imports. There you go. It goes back to what it was before. This is the export and import system. I hope you guys all enjoy it and learn something new today. And if you did, make sure you leave a like as it supports the video. And subscribe to my channel if you're new around here. Turn on the bell for future notifications of videos and live streams. Check out the join button below if you want to become a member of the channel. Or check out the Patreon, which is in the description below. Now, side note, I've been working really hard on idle research lately. So if you guys haven't seen any of the previews yet, make sure you go check them out. They're on my channel. And you can wishlist the game on Steam as well. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one, which will be episode 4.3. And that will be WebGL support. So just a heads up, we're going to be doing something very different there. Well, not really very different, but WebGL and the normal standalone and mobile, they're, they're a little different when it comes to the import and export system. So I'll be sure to show you guys in the next video. So be sure to stay tuned. Anyways, thanks again. Peace.